Turn up my book, oh oh. Hello everybody, and today I am gonna tell you some things that I wish I knew before I started transitioning. Everything changes. So before I jump straight into the video, I would just like to say a few things. Today is Thursday. And I was back at school. It's a long story. Check out my blog post. You can find it down in the description below under my website. And then, yeah, you can find it there quite easily. Anyway, so college is going not so well for me. So I went back to school. And I'm now back at school. And some other stuff, I've got better light. So we have actually got a light now. Wow, it's actually quite warm. If I strip off in this video, I blame the light. <laughs> So, are we ready to list some things that I wish I knew before I transitioned? Okay, I know you're just the, the fly. So are you ready for this list because I'm doing list videos now? I don't know why, but yeah, I hope you're ready. Yeah. So when I started transitioning, I wasn't quite sure on the whole process. I know, looking back, I was just so like out of it, I just did not know about it, like I just, this is how much knowledge I had on it, representing nothing, okay, yeah okay. So when I first transitioning, I really did not know how long it was going to take, like I know transitions never really have like a set amount of time, it's not like five years time, it's all over, because I feel personally like you never actually stop transitioning. I just feel like it's a continuous process, you're always learning. Now if I look back to some of the things that I did when I first started transitioning, I don't do them anymore because I've learned that that does not make me more authentic and stuff like that. So it's like a general process. Like I'm trying to walk, work, work. Time is very weird because like just to wait for each month's injection, it, it doesn't feel like a month goes by, it honestly doesn't. I mean, it sounds like I enjoy my injections, which I don't really enjoy the process of it, but I enjoy having it, if that makes any sense. That sounds, I don't know if that sounds bad, I think it sounds bad, I'm sorry. But yes, I really did not realise how long the whole process to get referrals and doctors and stuff like that. I didn't necessarily think it was going to be an overnight process, I honestly didn't. And it's been, like, how many years now? One and a half years since I came out as MTF. I just honestly feel like, it's so weird. Like, where I am now, I honestly thought I'd be, like, maybe six months ago or, like, a year ago. I honestly did not realise I'd be in this position a year and six months after I came out. And on that, I just want to add on a section saying that if people didn't know, non-binary before fully, and I was non-binary for, like, years, yeah, that because people comment always like, You've been transitioning for a year and a half. How are you so good at what you do? I, I, I know this topic off by heart, I promise. Like, yeah, okay. Now, another thing I didn't realise was the amount of people that would reject me. Now, I've got an interesting story of that thing. When I originally came out as MTF, my granddad was still alive and he was very homophobic and transphobic and everything. And my parent, my parent, and it got to the point where my parents were ready to tell my granddad and my auntie and everyone else knew except for my granddad. And so they were about to tell them, but my granddad decided to make a very homophobic statement on a different matter. It was nothing to do about me, but they're just saying, oh, Gay people should burn in hell. <sighs> that kind of thing. My parents never actually told my granddad. And a few months later, my granddad died. Now, I myself regret not telling my granddad. I don't know if my granddad would have accepted me or not accepted me. I don't know. And I will never know. And because I didn't know how my granddad would have reacted, I went to his funeral in very neutral clothing. I felt that was the best thing I could have done for my granddad. Because I I honestly don't know what he would have said. And another story was when my mum told a lot of family friends, a lot of my mum's friends left her. 
Now, it didn't really affect me personally, but it affected my family quite a bit. But my parents stayed with me and stayed strong. And on the topic of being strong, I did not realise how strong I would have become. I can now just be me, and I can face challenges, and I can fend for myself in a way. I can go head on, confident, and I'm I'm internally strong. Like I've got mental strongness. Is that a real term? Probably. Now is. I'm gonna put it in the dictionary. So I've got this mental strength where I'm just so like powerful that I feel like. If anyone challenges me, I can fend for myself, and before, I wasn't the most public person. I never was so like, yeah, come at me, I was never like that kind of person. Not like muscle strength, because, you know, my muscles are like, eh, eh, muscle, muscle. But I feel like my internal strength of like, resilience and pushing forward and being able to fend for myself and confidence and all that has grown so much. When I first started transitioning, like before even the non-binary days, I, I used to be very like, mm, little me. But now I just, I feel confident about what I say. I feel like I'm in a position now where I can help others and make sure there is a change in their lives. And my aim in life is always to help improve the lives of others. That is how I live. I aim to help people. And I feel like right now, I am strong enough, I'm confident enough to help people successfully and efficiently. Another thing I want to cover is about when my parents found out I was MTF. Now, there was a whole like coming out section. It wasn't a big thing because they were already like, well, we already knew this kind of thing. But I didn't realize how accepting and how strong my parents would be as well. My parents were unbelievably accepting. Now, I wasn't expecting them not to be accepting, but there was something inside of me saying, is it time now? Do I need to tell them? And when I did finally come out as MTF, like I said, I think I just said, I am MTF. And they just like, they just knew. And a day later, it was all fine. But I kind of didn't know how they were going to react. Like, I knew they were going to be accepting no matter what, but I didn't know how they were going to acknowledge it and react to it. And I think, their reaction could have either gone negative and for the worst, to be honest, or how it is now. And I don't see there as a middle. Like, for me, there was no middle accepting. It was either I could see them either denying it and wanting me to just not be here, or accepting how I am today. But I honestly, when I first told them that I was MTF, I did not realise they would be this strong and stand by my side on my journey. And one of the main points of this video is how well known I would have got if I knew back a year and a half ago that I would be this popular and this open and public. Like, I am like out of the world on how much support I've been given. Like, I can't thank you guys and my Instagram followers, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, so on. I just can't believe the support I've been getting and it's just amazing how I'm now using my confidence and strength to fight for a cause that needs to be fought for. And I'm so pleased that everyone understands that everyone else is fighting for their rights and I understand I'm not the only one, I am definitely not the only one fighting. Just to be in such a strong community and to be able to know that one day we will all be accepted and loved and there won't be any hatred is something that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate, I'm passionate about making this world so equal that equal is just normal. It's just gonna be a bit of every single day and there won't be any difference. And people won't see it as cisgendered or transgendered. They'll just see it as gender. And that is my aim. And on a note of my popularity, I did not realize how many people would just be my friends just because I'm transgender or a public figure? I honestly, I hate it. I hate the fact that people out me in the canteen of college and be like, oh, this person's a famous trans person, look up to them. And they're like, oh my god, let's be best friends. I'm like, no, I pick my friends. You do not pick me, I pick you, okay? And if I pick you, you then pick me, and then it's friends. That's how I work, like, I hate it. Like, I can't trust anyone and it really annoys me. I don't know who likes me for liking me or liking me because I'm trans and I'm 
popular. It, it really does bug me about that. And before I go on to the next point, I just want to say about the whole friend section, I am incredibly lonely. All day and all night, I don't really have anyone. Like, I've got my doctors, I've got my parents, I've got my support team, I've got my core support team, I've got everyone surrounding me. My dog's barking. <laughs> I've got everyone surrounding me, and it's just so difficult to actually socialise. It's unbelievably lonely for me, and I called out to you guys if you want to make me feel better and be friends with me, I'm happy to be friends with people. That sounds like I'm being friends with strangers. I'm not promoting that. So another point I want to bring up is how difficult it is to find a toilet. Now, I go to London every month, basically, and I'm always in London. It's amazing. I love London. I honestly love London a lot. But the one thing that annoys me is toilets, because you cannot find a unisex or disabled toilet anywhere. Literally, you either have to pay like 20p or whatever to get into a toilet. But they rarely, rarely have a unisex or disabled toilet. Now, why do I just go in females? Because technically I don't have my certificate yet. Why do I go in males? Because I don't want to. Yeah. Good. So, the whole idea of toilets in London really needs to be fixed. And I am going to be fighting with the Tavistock in Parliament to try and fix that. For not just London, but for everywhere and where I live. I'm going to change the public toilets to unisex. That's my plan. I haven't actually asked anyone, but I am going to do that. I'm going to try. I'm going to try and do it, and I'll keep you up to date. Anyway, yeah, next point. Another thing I want to say is how difficult it is to wear tight stuff, including dance wear. Now, I did cover this in a leotard video that I did somewhere. Yeah, I did a leotard video on this channel, all about wearing leotards and gas and all that kind of jazz. And... Like, when I first transitioned, like, we're going back when I started ballet, uh, like, um, 10, 10 years ago. Do you know how difficult it is to wear a leotard? I'll tell you that right now. Don't do it. Don't put yourself to shame. I know you might want to do it. Just, just trust me on this. It will, it will affect you harder in the long run if you do. If you are MTF or FTM, I would recommend not using tight stuff in public unless you know what you're doing. I honestly, I know that might hurt people's feelings, but if you do not know, it will expose you and a lot of stuff. Hence why I keep it top secret if I've had an operation or not had an operation. Like, no one needs to know that. It's my personal business, you don't need to know, okay? My final point today is how little people knew about terminology. No one knows any terminology. No matter how much I try, my parents always mess up. I did make a series called How to Help Your Transgender Teen by me, I know. And I did study from a book which I have left downstairs, but you can see the videos and you can see the book. My camera's gonna run out of battery soon. Now. Okay, okay, it's back, it's back. We're, we're still alive, I'm still here. I hope you didn't miss me. I'm just going to get comfy. So, I did make a series called How to Help Your Transgender Teen and that has all a section of tons of videos about terminology. There is one video dedicated to terminology and I advise everyone to watch that even if you're not a parent or just someone who's about to start transitioning or just anyone. I advise everyone to watch that video. Like, people do not know the terminology. Doctors don't, like if they're not a gender doctor they're not going to know the terms. My college don't and it's Oh, it infuriates me. It honestly does. Like, that is my number one bug. If I could fix anything, I'd fix terminology. Everyone needs to know. Okay? Yeah, I made a video. End of that. And just because I was just about to end it, I was just, I was just thinking in my mind, what else could there be? And another thing is how many times you get denied for nothing. And I'm not saying anything, Mayflower College. Um, about how often you get rejected from certain stuff. Now, recent times I have been denied entry and stuff is happening, I'm not meant to say much, especially online. Anyway, it's, it's bad. I can't go anywhere now. Unless I've been there before, I physically can't join any clubs. Like, I, I can't join anything. If I go to a swimming club, I'd probably get denied. If I went to a dance club, I'd probably get denied. If I went to a theatre, I'd get denied. If I went to a school, I'd probably get denied. Unless I've been there before, like, I went back to my secondary school and they accepted me, they, they welcomed me back. 
If I went back to another school, they'd be like, no, no, no. Everyone does not understand what it's like to be trans. And I really hope this video helps people. It might sound like my life is dull and sad and depressing, but I live my life because it's who I am. And I do this because this is what I feel like I need to do. I feel I also need to help others understand from my perspective and the transgender community. I'm sure many people in the transgender community agree with some of the points I've made in this video. And it might seem like, wow, I didn't realise that people went through like this. It really is this bad. And unless the world changes, not much is going to change. Hence why I want to help. Hence why I became a public figure and stood out. And that's why I make videos on YouTube. Because I want to help others understand it from our view. And I want others to understand that it's not just a quick, oh, I'm going for a quick operation and cut off there. I can't say a bad word. You can't just, or, Drum. Okay, that's real. Oh, I'm, I'm out. So before this video gets any worse, I am ending it <laughs> because it's just, it's just going to get worse. So thank you guys for watching. Yay. So remember, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Good night.